Hey, I'm JR. We're here in our install bay and we are going to install an amp and a sub in this Mazda. Now the process is pretty much the same in most cars, so we're going to go over the basic steps, what it takes to install an amp and a sub. In this particular car, we've got the factory stereo. So let me go over what we're going to do here. First, we're going to use the uh, power wire and the ground wire and stuff in here to run power from the battery. The battery is under the hood in this car. We're going to run power wire from the battery through the firewall down the passenger side of the car uh, all the way into the back into the hatch area where we're going to install this sub. We're going to run an equally uh, sized wire to the ground. We'll just ground that in the back of the car probably to like a seat bolt or something. Uh, and then we'll run a little blue wire to this to turn the amp on and off with the radio. Uh, we'll also need to get music into this amplifier and that comes in right here to these RCA inputs. Uh, in this particular car we have a factory stereo so we're going to need to convert the speaker wire coming out of the back of the factory stereo, which we'll plug in right here on our line output converter. This will change it over to RCAs, which come out the other side. If we had an aftermarket stereo, that stereo would have RCA preamp outputs already on it that we could use, you know, connect our RCA cables directly from there, run them to the back, and plug them into the uh, inputs on the amp. Since we don't, that's why we need the line output converter to convert speaker wire into RCAs. These are the RCA cables that we're going to run from the line output converter to the amplifier. And of course, we don't want to run our RCAs right next to the power wire. That's a great way to get noise introduced into your system, which you do not want. To get music from the stereo into this line output converter, we're going to use this speaker wire here. And then to get music from the amplifier into our subwoofer, we're going to use this thicker, heavier gauge speaker wire here, because we got a lot more power. We need thicker wire. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to run this little remote bass knob so that the driver can crank the bass or turn the bass down as the song dictates. Uh, and we should have a pretty sweet little sub system added to the factory stereo. It's going to sound pretty darn good. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, disconnect the uh, negative terminal from the battery so that we don't uh, shock anything or blow anything up. It's a 10 millimeter socket here. It's probably enough. All right, we're going to tuck that away so it can't touch anything bad. And uh, the next things we're going to do is we're going to run this power wire. Uh, you can see it's got a nice power ring on it. This is the positive terminal of the battery. We're going to connect it right there uh, between that nut and that uh, stopper right there. So that's going to hold our power wire secure to the positive terminal of the battery. Uh, we're going to run this power wire up through here. We're going to put it in some flex loom to keep it protected from the heat of the engine. Um, we're going to install a fuse somewhere in this neighborhood right here. That will keep our entire vehicle safe uh, in case there's any kind of short in the power wire all the way from the front of the car to the back of the car. Um, we're going to run it over there to uh, this nice big huge grommet in the firewall where a lot of the factory wires go from the engine compartment through the firewall and into the passenger compartment. We're going to use this knife to poke a small hole in the rubber next to the wires, making sure not to cut any of the wires of course. And then we're going to poke this coat hanger through so that we can fish our wire through the grommet. So let's see here. All right, that should do. Now I'm going to take this coat hanger and I've already put a little hook on it. The idea here is that once we get the, the coat hanger through and we find it on the other side behind the glove compartment, we're going to take this power ring and just hook it on and pull it right back through. That's the idea. Hopefully it works out just that easily. All right, I've got the coat hanger through the hole and I'm pushing it through pretty much almost all the way. So just there's still enough for me to grab on this side and pull it back once I've got it uh, connected to the power ring on the other side. So now we're going to go around to, to behind the glove compartment and see if we can find our coat hanger and that hook to hook the wire onto. All right, let's pull our wire through. Oh yeah, just like it's supposed to work. All right, so we've pulled enough wire through to get over to the battery, and um, we also need to install a fuse holder. Uh, the amplifier wiring kit comes with a pretty nice fuse holder uh, with the fuse installed. So we're going to have to cut this wire 
somewhere, you want to do this pretty close to the battery. The closer to the battery, the better. We don't need it very long. Let's see if these wire strippers will do the job. Sometimes they uh, didn't work on super thick wire like this, but uh, they worked pretty nicely on that one today. All right. So now we can install, we're going to need an Allen wrench. Tighten it on down. That won't be coming out. All right, power wire securely attached to the fuse holder. No extra strands of copper hanging out on either side, so a nice clean thing there. We'll put the uh, cap on it for now, but we can just attach. We're going to screw that right down into there. Uh, and now we can go ahead and connect this to the battery. All right, power wire is now securely attached to the battery. We've got room to put our fuse holder right there, just a little bit of slack there. And now we can install the uh, flex loom and get this wire attached up here, probably with some zip ties. All right, so we've got the uh, power wire through the firewall. We've taken care of it all under the hood there. Now we just need to get it routed from behind the glove compartment, down the door sills, through the car, all the way to the back, where we're going to actually install the amplifier. Um, so I'm just going to lay the cable out along the route here. Um, we might have to pry these panels up and stuff, or we might be able to just kind of tuck it under there. I am using a little tool to sort of help it get tucked under there, but so far I haven't had to actually pry any panels out. All right, so we've got our power wire run back here to where we're going to put the amp and the sub, as you can see. It's routed right back to here. We're going to connect that right to the power connection on the amp. That's the power side. Now we've got to figure out where are we going to ground this amplifier. So we've got a short little wire. We want to ground this to a good bolt that goes right into the chassis of the vehicle back here in the back. Now it looks like the bolt and this surface are painted. Uh, we cannot have paint between the metal of our power ring and the, uh, the chassis ground. So we're going to want to sand that off. We're going to use some sandpaper to sand the paint away. So we've got bare metal. You really need a good ground anytime you're installing anything into a car to complete the circuit and make sure you're not getting noise. So we've sanded the uh, painted surface down to bare metal. We've sanded uh, this bolt head down to bare metal. We should be able to go ahead and put our power ring on it and screw this back into the car and we will have our ground connection. All right, good and tight. We've got our ground wire. Put that right next to our power wire. We can go ahead and put the uh, trunk of this hatchback back together. All right, so we've finished the power and ground, which is kind of on the other side of the car. And that's kind of the first half or the big part of an amplifier installation uh, is getting that power wire run from the front to the back and finding a good grounding point. We've got all that done. Now we're going to work on getting the music from our factory stereo in this car into the amplifier, which means we're going to take the dash apart. For that, I'll use the Crutchfield Master Sheets, which will show me how to get the dash apart. Uh, and we'll get into the back of the radio where all the speaker wires are, and we will tap into those wires so we can connect our line output converter and uh, grab a copy of the music and send it onto the back to the amplifier. All right, so we've got the factory stereo out. We will set that to the side. And we have uh, revealed our wiring harness, uh, and we've identified our speaker wires. So we're going to tap into those using these uh, posi taps, which make connecting to factory wires like this much easier than actually like uh, cutting and splicing into them. All right, so there's our four taps for the uh, factory speaker wire. Uh, we'll get some aftermarket speaker wire. We'll get those attached to the other sides here. The next thing I'm going to do is to uh, connect our power wire. We're going to use about a foot or so of this blue wire that came in the amplifier wiring kit. That's power and last some ground. All right, we've got rear speaker wire, positive and negative. We've got this connected to the ground wire. We've got this connected to the power wire. We're going to run those wires just long enough to get to this line output converter. We've 
found a space in the dash that uh, should fit perfectly. We've even checked it to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and start connecting them to these terminals on this line output converter. All right, now I've got all those connections made. We are ready to run the RCA cables up through the uh, dash here. Um, and you may notice we've got four RCA connectors. Uh, on this line output converter, there are actually four RCA outputs. Now, it is just a two channel uh, line output converter. So, and all we need for what we're installing today is this set of outputs right here, the base output, because we're installing a subwoofer amplifier. Um, but this uh, conveniently has an extra set of RCA outputs, which we're going to go ahead and run the cables for those uh, in case uh, the owner would like to install an amplifier later. So, we've got our line output converter wedged nice and tight in the dash here, and uh, we've got our RCAs uh, and our remote turn on wire. We started running them down through the dash right down here to my feet and now I'm going to get down and get underneath uh, and start to run them along the side of the car all the way to the back. All right, so we're going to run the RCAs and the remote turn on wire down this side of the vehicle. Um, we're also going to run the remote base knob control wire right along with them. Um, some amps have it, some don't. Sometimes it's an option. So um, this may or may not be a step you'll have to perform when you install your sub and amp. And so just like we did on the other side of the vehicle, now we are tucking these wires up underneath uh, these panels. All right, so we've run our RCA cables up the uh, driver's side of the vehicle along with our remote turn-on wire. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and connect everything up at the amplifier now because we've got all these wires uh, all back where we need them. So we'll start with the RCA wires, and these will just go right into the RCA connections on the side of the amplifier. On the other side is where our power and ground and speaker wires all connect. Uh, so we'll start with the power wire, that first wire that we ran. Go ahead and strip it. Comes with an Allen wrench so that we can use that to tighten down these wires. There's our power wire. Let's do our ground wire next. All right, and last but not least, our blue remote turn-on wire. All right, so all those are connected good and clean and solid. So all that's left now is to connect our speaker wire from the amp to the sub. And I've got some speaker wire right here. I'm going to go ahead and strip the wire. Speaker wire securely connected to the amplifier. All right, we are hooked up. We are ready to reconnect the negative cable on our battery. And just to recap, we ran power wire from the battery over on the passenger side of the vehicle all the way back to this amplifier back here. We grounded to a seat bolt right here back by the amplifier. And then we grabbed speaker wire signal from the factory radio in the dash, connected that to a line output converter right behind the radio. And we ran RCA cables and our blue remote turn on wire from behind the radio down the driver's side of the vehicle right back here to our amplifier where we've got all of that connected with some big thick speaker wire going from the amplifier to the subwoofer to make bass. And now this car is actually going to sound decent. Factory radio with a sub is a great enhancement. So uh, if you need any help picking out uh, an amp and a sub or any combination thereof, check out Crutchfield. Give us a call. We can certainly help you get the right stuff. And uh, of course, we can help you get it installed as well.